Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mastery Transcript Consortium Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Sarah. I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use, and we encourage you to use your Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time throughout the session. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the, uh, the schedule on the website for more. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash mastery. I'm now going to invite and welcome our first presenter from the University of Washington, Bothell. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Garrick Sherber, and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions here at the University of Washington, Bothell. Oh, my camera's a little blurry, but we'll take it. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quickly, and I got a little bit of a presentation for you about Bothell. Okay, share screen, screen two. Oh gosh, I'm doing something wrong. I'm on my Discord. I thought I had it figured out, but I don't. <laughs> it did if you want to try it again um, or open in a separate window. You yes. did have it first, but that was the wrong screen in front of you. No, that's Okay, I think wrong. I got it. I think I got it. No, there we go. Oh, there we go, all right. Gosh, technology woe. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, so University of Washington Bothell, if you've never heard of UW before, we are located in Washington State, in Seattle, Washington specifically. Um, now, UW Bothell is a tri-campus model. So there are three universities in Washington, Bothell, Seattle, and Tacoma. Um, so we are going to be the Bothell campus, the northernmost UW campus. Um, so just a quick look at our school overall. So uh, University of Washington, again, tri-campus model, but they're all the same University of Washington. Um, what makes Bothell a unique campus that we're a smaller version of UW Seattle. So we have about 6,000 students on our campus. Really small, more intimate campus experience. That student to faculty relationship is paramount to us. We have a lot of um, present or a lot of teachers working on research opportunities, but they care most about teaching. We don't have any graduate assistants or any teaching assistants teaching any of our classes. And we're a very student focused campus. Our campus is growing rapidly, rapidly with our student population. Um, and that's evident in the things that campus has been doing. They recently built a new parking garage and then our brand new housing has opened this year. So it's really exciting to see the developing world of Bothell happening. So all great things there. Um, so just as I mentioned, we are a smaller version of UW, so we got about 6,000 students at our campus. Um, we also do have a high transfer population, which is unique to our campus. So if you're considering the community college pathway and then transferring to a four-year institution, we absolutely can support you in that journey. Um, so it's very exciting there. And then again, our average class size is about 30, that more intimate campus experience available with us in the Husky experience. Um, so just a quick brief look at Bothell as a whole. So uh, Bothell is a small town in Washington. They call themselves a river, thriving riverfront community in Washington. We're about 25 minutes north of Seattle. So you have still have access to all the great things that Seattle, Washington has available to you. Um, Seattle itself is surrounded by tech industry leaders, amazing medical services, and K-12 through schools. So there's a lot of options for internships and the college to career pathways looking really strong in the Seattle area. And then of course, Washington is a beautiful place for recreation. If you've never been to Washington, we've got mountains, we got water, we got snow. So there's so much to do in the area. So uh, the outdoor wellness program here at UW Bothell really does care about getting students off campus so they can check out the beautiful nature that Washington has to offer. So fabulous things to do. Now, I don't know if there's many out of state students in this group, there could be, um, but since we are a state institution, there are two different tiers of tuition. So we have an in-state for Washingtonians, and then we have an out-state for anyone living outside the state of Washington or international. Um, the numbers here are just estimations. These will not be official things you're paying towards the UW, um, but we do have an out-of-state scholarship for out-of-state students. It's called the Chancellor Scholarship. It's up to $10,000 per academic year, a really fabulous scholarship for students. Um, oops, I think I moved on, but I didn't. Great. Um, and then just quickly going over some of the timelines. So this is more relevant for my seniors in the room. Um, if you are a senior right now, November 15th is our early action deadline. Really awesome. Um, get you to get notified if you've been admitted earlier than other students, which is awesome. And then we are on the common application. So I'm sure there's other few other schools on this common app too. Uh, basically you save a lot of time in the common app process by building a profile. 
and applying multiple schools to that one application. So it's really awesome. And lastly, we're a test optional. No SAT or ACT required with the UW. We love that. Um, and just real quickly wrap up here, I just want to mention, and this goes for me and all the other fabulous presenters you have today, admissions is here for you. Our job is to help you in the search process. Whether or not you come to our school, we want to make sure you do find the right fit. So please utilize us in that context. We're always available to help answer questions, um, kind of navigate this college search process, because it can be tricky for some folks. So please use us, use our skill set, and um, let us help you find your right search and your right match for college. So... Yay. Thank you all so much. Um, I'm going to pass it over for Sarah to present our next speaker. Thank you so much. Next up, we have University of Michigan Marcel Family School of Education. Hello, everybody. Let me uh, just quickly share my screen with you. Uh, my name is Barry Fishman. I'm a faculty member at the Marcel Family School of Education. And when you hear School of Education, you may think uh, a path to becoming a teacher. And we can absolutely do that in the Marcel Family School of Education. But we are also most, uh, what I'm here tonight to talk to you about is a brand new kind of bachelor's degree that is actually not about teaching. Uh, it's about learning to be a learning leader. And I'll explain what that means. The program is called Learning Equity and Problem Solving for the Public Good. It's a brand new four-year bachelor's degree program. It's really a learning sciences program focused on how people learn, how to support and participate in effective change for improvement within communities, organizations, and society. This is gonna be a very small cohorted experience in which you're gonna learn about the science of human learning and have uh, extensive hands-on experiences that help you develop the kinds of skills that you would need to bring impact to communities or, and organizations. And that is what makes you a future learning leader. It's a unique kind of experience for college in that it's built around a residence year on a brand new campus that we're opening up in Northwest Detroit called Mary Grove, and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, Hands-on courses, all the courses are designed to help you apply your knowledge uh, and engagement in research projects and internships throughout your entire four years in the program. It's also a mastery-based program, and I'll show you our mastery goals in a moment. Uh, it's mastery based because I believe deeply in mastery. In fact, I'm, I've been an advisor to the Mastery Transcript Consortium since its founding. So this is an image of the Marygrove campus. And what makes Marygrove so interesting is that it's got right present on it, uh, a K-12 school and an, uh, there's an elementary school on the left and a high school, an early childhood center, a retirement facility, and also it's playing home to a number of public service organizations, including the Detroit Youth Choir, public service entrepreneurship, startups, and other organizations. These would be our buildings where we are going to have academic space and a residence hall that's completely devoted to our program. Here are some images of that academic space in the upper right and some renderings of the residence hall, which is undergoing extensive renovations right now in preparation for our fall 2024 launch. Now, though you would be spending your first year at Mary Grove in Detroit, you're also a part of the Ann Arbor campus. Tuesdays and Thursdays are in Ann Arbor. We provide transportation uh, all through the week, back and forth between Detroit and Ann Arbor. And you would uh, be uh, integrated fully into that freshman experience at Ann Arbor. Uh, so you have the best of both worlds. I mentioned the learning goals. The goal is to help you, as I said, become a learning leader. And we think to do that, you need to develop a range of ways of knowing. And also, and this is what often gets left behind in most uh, college uh, academic uh, approaches, but which as mastery transcript students, you would certainly recognize a focus on personal good, public good, and group good. And all graduates from LEAPS will receive both a traditional UM transcript and a new UM mastery transcript. What would LEAPS prepare you for? Well, as I mentioned, this is not itself a teaching uh, preparation program, but it can provide you a uh, preparation for many different career paths and education related careers. Uh, public service entrepreneurship is another path that we expect to be supporting students in. Government, public policy, law, public community health, really anything you can imagine, we think becoming a learning leader is good preparation for. Now, who are we looking for? Because as I said, this is a brand new program at the University of Michigan. We're looking for students that have an interest in learning and continual self-improvement, motivation to apply what you're learning to the betterment of society, a deep commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice, an appreciation for teamwork and collaboration, and the ability to be self-directed when needed. We're going to start pretty small, uh, 20 students in our first cohort, and pretty quickly over the next couple of years, it will grow to be 120 students per cohort. 
but our first cohort is certainly going to be a group of trailblazers. What comes next? Well, we invite you to explore more about the program at our website. There's a QR code here. If it's not scannable over Zoom, uh, you can always go directly to this URL. Uh, you can uh, meet with a, re a recruiter at this, uh, this uh, URL as well and apply through the Common App. And, uh, and to do that, you would indicate that you're interested in the Marsal Family School of Education as your freshman unit of admission and LEAP's uh, Learning Equity and Problem Solving for the Public Good as your focus program. You can also use this contact information to talk to our admissions and recruiters office about uh, joining the program uh, to, uh, to work towards becoming a teacher. Uh, whatever your path, I wish you great success in it. And if you're interested in continuing your mastery learning journey with this new program, I look forward to talking with you more about LEAPS. So I will uh, end my presentation there and hand it over to the next presenter. Thank you so much, Barry, appreciate it. Next up, we have Johnson and Wales University. Hi, Sarah, thank you everyone, I appreciate it. My name is Mel Melissa Stevens. I am an admissions representative with Johnson and Wales University, and I'm just gonna share my screen here for you. So um, at Johnson and Wales, if you've never heard of us before, we actually have two campuses. We have a campus in Providence, Rhode Island, and Charlotte, North Carolina. Providence would be the bigger campus. There's about uh, 6,000 students on the Providence campus and about 2,200 students on our Charlotte campus. Uh, we do not charge an out-of-state tuition, though, so we're not more expensive because we may be out-of-state to you. Um, just going to go over here and talk a little bit about why Johnson and Wales and what are some of the things that kind of make us different than some of the other programs you may have heard of before. Um, one of the first things that makes makes us different is education or learning by doing. So um, Johnson and Wales really believes in that hands-on education and having like lab style classes for most of our majors, everything from culinary to criminal justice, sports entertainment, event management, uh, communications, business, media studies, all of these are gonna be lab style classes. Um, and we really believe having that experience for the students kind of helps you retain that information a little bit better by using your hands. Um, so you can kind of see that we have a small class size, about 18 students to one professor for a lab style class, be a little bit bigger for an academic style class, about 22 students to one professor for that. Um, at Johnson & Wales, you're really learning from these professors and educators that have real world experience. So you're not learning from somebody who's just teaching to you from a book. You're learning about their actual experience in that industry. One of the things I liked as a student at Johnson & Wales is that they always brought in people from that industry to kind of talk to you. So not only did you get to hear what it was like to work on the front lines, but you also got to kind of make those connections after class uh, with those people that were brought in from that particular industry. And they really do become your mentor and kind of continue on with you after you've graduated from Johnson and Wales. So we also do something called upside down major, which means first day of freshman year, you're taking classes in your major. And the reason why we do that is we really want to immerse you in that field right from the very beginning of your time at Johnson and Wales. Also, we want you to kind of figure out if you like it. Um, if it's not a good fit for you, we want to find something that you're passionate about. Um, I talked a little bit about the campus locations. I'll kind of go into them a little, little bit more. Um, but the Providence campus is uh, right in the middle of downtown Providence. You can see the city skyline. That's our main green. And then the uh, library right there with our two dorms on the other side. Uh, so it's really a beautiful campus. We also have a harbor side campus, which is where our culinary students are located. And then you can take a quick look at our Charlotte location. They call Charlotte the Queen City. This is in right in uptown Charlotte. Um, so it's right in the middle of a, a bustling city, which is a really cool opportunity for students to be a part of. Oops, sorry. Oh, I guess I'm not the only one having technical difficulties these days. <laughs> sorry about that. So I wanna talk a little bit about your next steps if you're interested in coming to Johnson & Wales. So some things that we offer for you is explore from home. You can come visit. Um, we have virtual visit opportunities. We also have virtual um, appointments with our financial planners. If you're an accepted student, which I think is a really great opportunity to sit down and kind of talk nuts and bolts. You can explore both campuses from home or you can come uh, to visit in person. We do have experience days where students can come and be a part of their major for a day, meet with uh, current educators and current students and kind of get an opportunity opportunity to kind of talk to them. 
<clears throat> we also have a free application. It doesn't cost anything to apply to Johnson & Wales. Um, we are a part of the Common App, or you can apply online. There is a QR code right here on my screen, right there. Um, and I'll put the link in the uh, chat box for you guys as well. Um, we are test optional. We do not require an SAT or AC ACT score. We don't require essays or recommendation letters, but I always recommend that students do them. It's a great, great way for us to see you as a student beyond just your GPA. Our early action deadline is November 1st, um, and we're a non-committal early action. So if you come, you know, if you decide to do early action, you don't have to commit if you're accepted. Uh, the early action um, acceptances start to come out on uh, November 15th. So it's a pretty quick turnaround there for you. A holistic application review. We do have a pretty liberal transfer policy. So if you have some college credit now, um, you know, we can take a look at those and see what would might be able to transfer over for you. You can also visit us online on any of our social media pages. We actually have a really cool TikTok. If you can go on there, you can kind of see um, some of the student takeovers. They show you dorm rooms and kind of show you what they're doing in class. Um, so you really get an upfront and personal view. And I will pass it over to the next presenter. Wonderful, thank you so much. Next up, thank we you. have University of Southern California. Hi everyone, my name is Joe Beltran. I am uh, zooming in from Los Angeles at the University of Southern California. Very excited to share a little bit about um, what you can get from us. So first and foremost, getting started, big picture. We are what you would identify as a large private research institution. Again, I mentioned we're located in Los Angeles, California. Um, so there are some numbers on the screen. I know they're a little daunting. Um, we have a total enrollment of about 49,000 students. That includes all of our graduate students and doctoral students as well. But what we want to focus on today is at 21,000. So that's how many undergraduates we have. We do have several campuses. Our main one is in uh, near downtown Los Angeles. We also have a separate health sciences campus nearby. Um, so we do have uh, other places and spaces where our students engage, but the majority of the 21,000 are on our main uh, campus near downtown LA. Seems like a very large number, but we're still able to provide an average class size of 26 with a students with faculty ratio of nine to one. So students will have close interactions with their faculty members, but also with their classmates and their peers as well. This is a little image, uh, one of our newer buildings, the Kaufman School of Dance. Uh, and you can see our, our floor, our campus is, is relatively flat. So we don't have a lot of hills or anything but it's mostly flat. So you'll see a lot of skateboarding, um, a lot of bicycles, a lot of walking um, from students throughout the day. Academically, what we are, um, we have over 150 majors and more than 150 minors. Our bigger and more popular majors are found within our Marshall School of Business, our Viterbi School of Engineering, which includes computer science, our Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism, which also includes public relations, our Dornside College of Letters, Arts and Sciences, as well as our School of Cinematic Arts or our film school. So interdisciplinary opportunities is very important for us. We believe that it really contributes to the distinct learning experience that our students have. So whether that means you're pursuing a major and a second major or a major and a minor, um, we also have a really great opportunity for students to pursue what we call a progressive degree. And it's actually when they're in their third year, they can apply for a graduate degree. And if admitted, they actually start taking those graduate level courses in their senior year. Um, and so they're able to kind of do their bachelor's and master's at the same time. Uh, undergraduate research is available to students as early as they wish. They can work with a faculty member on an existing project or do independent research as well. There are also funding options available for students to pursue this kind of research. We do have a global perspective. Um, we're an international institution, so we have one of the largest international student populations of any college in the country. Um, we are that study abroad experience for students coming from outside the US. Uh, we also have study abroad opportunities for students who are from the United States. And so right now we have over 50 on five separate continents. Um, and this will actually be a larger number depending on your major. Some majors have specific locations and programs. For example, our business program has a specific study abroad programs. Um, also our architecture, our dramatic arts, academic areas, they'll have specific ones as well. Uh, we definitely think that that perspective, that global perspective really contributes to the classroom learning. Um, and we actually have USC offices in nine cities around the world as well. 
As I mentioned, we're located in Los Angeles, which is the second largest city in the country. Really broad diversity of neighborhoods. I actually see this image, uh, not at my time, but I see this image on my way to work every day. We do have uh, an accessible train system in Los Angeles. We call it the Metro. Uh, you may have heard that Los Angeles will host the Olympic Summer Olympics again in 2028. So the city is really kind of investing more uh, finances into making it uh, a really strong commuting area. So the train systems, there'll be a new one at LAX that's opening up relatively soon. So we're excited about that. And as I mentioned, USC is just south of downtown LA. Campus life, um, we occupied the ancestral land of the Tonga, Tonga people. So we always wanted to make sure that we recognize and, and pay respects to uh, their histories past and present as well. We are a residential community at USC, so we do not require students to live at USC, but it is highly encouraged. And the majority of them do, especially in their first year. We have a two-year housing guarantee. It does not mean we can't house you as an upper-class person, um, but we can uh, provide that housing. Uh, we are growing in our residential spaces too, and one of those locations is the USC Village. So we added 2,700 beds, and it also includes retail like Starbucks, Trader Joe's, and Target on the local level. We have about a thousand clubs uh, and organizations. We are currently in the Pac-12 as a division one school and next year we are joining the Big Ten. Intramural and club sports are also available. Right now we have over 400,000 living alumni around the world. We are what we call lifelong and worldwide and allowing our students and graduates alumni networking opportunities is something that's really paramount at USC. Application, we are, this essentially says we are a holistic review application school. Uh, we are exclusive users of the common application, but we also ex accept applications from QuestBridge too. Uh, lots of information, but just know we're an early action school and our deadline is November 1st with an RD deadline of January 15th, unless you are applying to a portfolio based program. Um, and that is due December 1st. I see Sarah, is that my time, Sarah? If you're right, it is embarrassing. If you have any <laughs> questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks. Thank you so much, Joe. Appreciate it. Next up, we have Bowdoin College. Hi, folks. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share. Oops, sorry. We're all having we're all having an evening. Um, I think that's done it correctly. Um, as a reminder, um, you can ask questions in the Q&A. Um, my name is Jackie. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm here on behalf of Bowdoin College, um, and I'm a former member of the class of 2012. I'm also an associate dean of admissions here. Um, oh, excuse me. I think that my slides might be just moving without me. Um, I want to take a minute before I go into this. Um, as you'll find out in the slideshow, we're located in Maine, and so um, I apologize. I usually have a lot more... Um, pep when talking through these, um, but I just want to acknowledge that there's some um, a really sobering um, environment right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start talking about what a liberal arts college is. So like I said, um, we are a small liberal arts college located in Brunswick, Maine. So we are a small college. We do not have any graduate programs, which is the number one hallmark of being a small liberal arts college, we have a broad curriculum that encourages inquiry and exploration before our students choose a focus area. Um, there is um, a focus on small class sizes and a lot of faculty interaction and mentorship. Our average class size um, and our student faculty ratio is about 10 to one. Sorry, my slideshow is running away from me. Um, and students primarily live together in a residential community where they have leadership, social, and cultural opportunities. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on with my laptop. It's fine. We're going with it. And you can study in the STEM fields and do research. That's one of the misnomers that I think often go with the liberal arts college. We are a liberal arts and sciences college. So know that we do have rigorous study available across our curriculum. This is a picture of our campus. Um, we are the Bowdoin Polar Bears, as you can see in the statue over here. And so um, over here is, of course, the Student Union, just a picture um, across our um, campus. 
We welcome students from all over the country, um, and we do send students all over the world. About 13% of our incoming class had an um, international background. About 20% of our students were first generation to college, and we welcome students from all across the country and all across the world to come join a living learning community. One of the things I would highlight about what you can study in college, um, this is a list of all of our programs and majors. As a liberal arts college, we're really focused on those academic areas and we're focused on interdisciplinary learning. So making sure that students can take what they are learning and apply it across the curriculum. Students declare their majors about halfway through their sophomore years. And so this is a screenshot of what they can be taking, but just to distill it down a little bit, these are our top 10 majors in alphabetical order. Annually, our largest major is government and legal studies, but it's followed very closely by the nine behinds that often will jostle for positions. About 47% of our students will declare a double major, and another third will declare a major and a minor. So just know that we absolutely offer a really broad um, curriculum that also encourages exploration and depth when you hit your sophomore year. Um, we are deeply connected to place. The two things that we talk about when we talk about Bowdoin are we talk about connection to place and to Maine and our community, and we also talk about the common good. This is a picture um, of location. This is a um, photo of um, the Coastal Studies Center, which is located about 20 minutes south of campus. It's 120 acres of land located directly on the Gulf of Maine. It's where our students can do hands-on research. One thing about the body of water that comes right up against the state is that it is the fastest warming body of water in the world. And so um, there are some really incredible opportunities for our students to do research there um, directly into seeing the impacts, um, the daily impacts of climate change on the community and on our environment. But I also mentioned that the other thing that we talk about a lot when it comes to Maine is that um, when we bring our students here to Bowdoin, we hope that they acknowledge the common good and that they embrace the common good as a fundamental tenant of their learning. And what that really means is that we are really intentional about bringing together a community that is collaborative and not at all competitive. Here at Bowdoin, it's really about a rising tide lifting all boats, that students here work together, they work with their faculty members, they get to know their faculty members really well in mentorship groups and really really receive that one-on-one -on -one mentoring all through their time in college, um, doing research in their classes and in their office hours. People will ask what students do after Bowdoin. Um, this is a screenshot of some of our largest uh, nonprofit employers where a lot of our students will go after their time um, when they graduate. These are some of the nonprofit employers where we hope that our students are manifesting the common good, but we would also emphasize that we send students to some of the largest corporate entities um, in the world, hopefully to manifest the common good where they end up there as well. These are some of the employers of recent Bowdoin graduates. And if students aren't prepared to go um, for the profit or the nonprofit world, about 20% of our students will go directly to graduate school. So 20% of our students will enter graduate school. These are those schools that are taking the highest number of Bowdoin students. That's into medical schools, business schools, law schools, and just for master's and PhD programs. And so that's something that we talk about as well. We have been test optional since 1969. Um, so I always describe this graph in two questions. When you submit your application, we're asking, um, can you do the work here at Bowdoin? And if so, what kind of roommate will you be? I can see Sarah, so I am going to go ahead and just say one aspect of our financial aid is we've started um, on digital equity to make sure that our students have equal access to hardware and software. So as part of a comprehensive 100% financial aid policy, we will also make sure that students are set up for success and equity in the classroom with the MacBook and the iPad alongside our packages. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and hand <laughs> Off. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Santa Clara University. Hello, everybody. Give me one second so I can start sharing my screen here. Thank you all for being here. We'll get started. 
So hello, my name is Barbara, and I'm currently the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission here at Santa Clara University. I'm also a Super Bronco, which means that I myself graduated from Santa Clara University. So if you all have any questions, feel free to reach out to me about campus life, what it was like to be a Bronco, all that good stuff. So Santa Clara, we are a Jesuit Catholic private university located in the heart of the Silicon Valley in the San Francisco Bay Area. I would say that our location plus school size is definitely the biggest thing that sticks out to our students and makes us really special. We're also uh, just shy of 10 minutes away from the San Jose International Airport, which makes it really easy for our out-of-state students to get in and out when it's time to visit mom and dad. Um, a lot of our students wonder, or a lot of folks wonder where students come from, and about 50% of our students come directly from California, but the other 50 come from over 49 states and 47 countries. Given our location, our students have access to amazing career opportunities, and just about 80% of our students will take on at least one internship during their time here at SCU, and this is actually a requirement for many of our Bachelor of Science students. Also, around 91% of our students are employed full-time in graduate school or in a service program within six months of graduating. And of course, given our Silicon Valley location, our top employers do include Google, Amazon, Cisco, Microsoft, Apple. I would say that they're all within 10 miles or under away from campus. And if their headquarters aren't in San Jose itself, it's probably in the San Francisco area. And that is just a short one hour drive from here. We also do have the Caltrain um, right across the street from our campus, which makes it really easy for our students to go into the city. So like I said, we are a Jesuit school. We're one of 26 other universities um, within the Jesuit world. So what really our mission and philosophy is educating our students mind, body, and spirit. And this is certainly reflected in our core curriculum through requirements of ethics and civic engagement and three religious theology courses, which you can get done in under one year. And our students are also very big on study abroad. About a quarter of our students will go abroad at least once during their time here. And that ratio is getting closer to about a third now. So lots of opportunities to explore internationally. I'd say that we're a medium sized university. So we're right in that 6,000 undergraduate student population. So not quite as big as USC, but not as small as the Claremont McKenna's. We do have a 10 to one student to faculty ratio with an average class size of 23 students per class. And as you get to those junior, senior level courses, those class sizes definitely get smaller. And we also have an amazing retention and graduation rate. So our retention rate is at a 93%, which means that our freshmen who choose to come to Santa Clara will stay at Santa Clara for their entire four years. And our four-year graduation rate is at a 89%. So our students do graduate on time. And I would say that our engineers who love to go through auxiliary programs sometimes skew that data. So let's get into a little bit about our application process. So I'm glad to say that our entire application can be done right through the Common App. And the way that this works is you choose one major within one school. So at SCU, we have three colleges. We have our College of Arts and Sciences, our Levy School of Business, and our School of Engineering. And the order this is in is biggest to smallest. So our College of Arts and Sciences is our biggest school and our School of Engineering is our smallest school. Our College of Arts and Sciences does have over 30 majors and our School of Engineering has around eight. And I would say that our School of Engineering is our most selective of the three, but um, majority of our student population is within College of Arts and Sciences. So let's look into a couple different things that Santa Clara really looks at when it's time for you to apply and for us to evaluate applications. So since we are holistic in the way that we educate our students, we're also holistic in the way that we review applications. So what this means is that we're not just looking at your GPA or test scores, we're also looking at you as an entire person. I can personally say that we read all 16 to 19 pages of your application. And while I do have some average GPAs up here on the screen, I can say that we deny students over that average and we accept students under that average. So take numbers as a grain of salt, but it is broken down by school up here. 
Some other things that we do look at as well is your strength of courses. So course rigor. So how many APs have you taken? How many um, does your school offer, right? Any extracurriculars, community service? What really takes up your time? If you're an athlete and that takes up a lot of your time, sometimes it might impact your grades. We take that into consideration. That's where that holistic overview comes into play. If you're in performing arts, a writer, anything like that, that is all taken into consideration. We are test optional, so you can't submit your SAT or ACT scores, but it will only be treated as an additional piece of information. It will not determine your admission. We also do require one letter recommendation for, from a high school counselor or a teacher, but you do have um, up to three. And let's get into our last slide here because I do see Sarah, so um, we'll just spend the next minute talking about deadlines. So there's a couple different ways to apply into SEU. So we do offer early action and early decision. Early action is non-binding. So you can just apply early and find out early if you were admitted right before Christmas. So it's a good time to celebrate with your family and friends. Then early decision is binding. So to contract, you're signing, saying that you're 100% intent on enrolling if offered admission. Then we have regular decision, enrolling admission for our transfer students. And you can find more information about our FAFSA and CSS profile um, on our website. We do offer need-based financial aid as well as merit scholarships. But Great. thank you so thank much, y'all. Thank you very much, Barbara. And at this time, I invite all of our wonderful presenters to join us back on screen and to go ahead and unmute themselves. We are going to do what we call here at StriveScan round robin questions, where I will pose set questions um, and get some uh, a, a great chance to hear some advice from our wonderful presenters. So our first question, let me put it on the screen here, is, um, and we'll go in the order that you presented. So starting with University of Washington Bothell, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? This is a great question. And I know it's going to be tricky because a lot of us are from different states in this area and you may be looking at college out of state, but I always like to tell folks if you can visit the campus, whether that's in person or through a virtual visit, that's really going to give you a great understanding if that campus is the right fit. I always tell people the college search process is like trying on shoes. When you go to your Nike, you go to Adidas, you go to DSW if you're in the Pacific Northwest, um, you don't just grab shoes off the shelf and go check out. You try them on first. How do they feel? How do they look? Those are the kind of things you want to be doing on these college searches. So definitely, if you can visit campuses, please do it. University of Michigan, Marshall Family School of Education. Very uh, there are two of us here. Deb may take the next one. So I, I would say keep in mind there's more than one college for you. Uh, a lot of people get fixated on one dream school and are disappointed when they don't get into that school. But there are many, many schools that are uh, excellent uh, and excellent for you. And so do, you know, as Garrick was saying, look around for that fit. Look for the look for the opportunities and look for things that um, that are different. There are a lot of things that make schools the same. Uh, what is it that makes the school different? Johnson and Wales University. Yeah, I was going to say, I actually was going to say the same thing that Garrick said about um, visiting, definitely. But I also think uh, putting as many schools or as many schools as you can on your FAFSA so that you can get a full financial aid award. Because I think a lot of students make the mistake of not comparing apples to apples. Like if they're looking at the cost of one school, but they don't have a full financial aid award or they didn't get their FAFSA in on that school, they're not able to really compare both of them properly. So I guess my best advice would be to put as many schools as you can on your FAFSA so you can get those full financial aid awards and really compare. Um, University of Southern California. I think enjoy the process. Uh, there's so much stress surrounding searching for colleges and uh, keeping the list and visiting if you can. Like all those are great, but enjoy the process, especially when you're writing your essays. If you have uh, colleges that require essays, um, pick a prompt that you enjoy to write about. Don't write about something that you think we want to read about. That's not fun. We want to hear about what you want to write about. Um, and so that's kind of one of my biggest thing is enjoy the process because when you enjoy it, will more than likely enjoy it just by reviewing your application. Voting college. 
Yeah, um, I know that it's easier said than done when we sit on this side of the desk, but I would encourage you, um, parents and students, to remember that the acceptance or the admittance is not the goal. The goal is to do well in college for those next four years and to find a place that will really thrive. And so we hear a lot from students, I think, who are um, trying to set up their entire high school career towards this like one moment where you get to open that envelope. And I would encourage you to remember that this goes far, far beyond um, that very high stress, high stakes. 30 seconds when you log into your portal, um, whenever it is that you're getting your decision. And Santa Clara University. Yeah, I would say ditto to what every other counselor said on here, but I would say definitely focus on location slash school size. I think that where a school is placed is um, a really big part of the college experience. So really try to see where you can envision yourself for the next four years and what kind of classroom setting you would like it to be in. Are you okay with having larger classroom sizes or are you someone who needs a more one-on-one connection with your professors, right? And I'd say that my last tip is to have a of course, Excel sheet with all your information, but an email just for anything related to colleges to keep everything very well organized. All right, and starting again with Univers uh, University of Washington Bothell, let me move on to our next question. Um, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? You know, it's a great question um, and kind of going back to that search process, right? Like I know Bothell's not the right fit for everybody, but I know we can be an amazing fit for students that might not consider Bothell initially. Um, so one thing I really love about Bothell is that we have that more intimate UW experience. So people are sometimes intimidated by University of Washington, Seattle that have like four 400 people in their introductory English course. You would just would never find that at Bothell, right? So we're still able to give you that UW experience, but just a lot more of an intimate, you know, one-on-one -on -one individualized classroom environment. So I think I really love that about Bothell specifically. And University of Michigan, Marshall Family School of Education. I think Deb, this one's for you. Yes, I'm gonna hop in on this one. Representing University of Michigan as a whole, we have over 50,000 students, but in our school of education, we are a very small community that's very dedicated and committed, specific to the LEAPS program to which Barry spoke. It is a unique program with a unique goal of creating learning leaders. And we welcome any conversations with students, faculty, counselors, or anybody on this call that would like to learn more, please reach out. Johnson and Wales University. I think one thing I'd really like students to know is that we're a family and that's really all it is. And not just when you're a student and you're, you know, actively in classes at Johnson and Wales, but far beyond that as well. You know, being an alumni I can kind of speak to that a little bit. Uh, we really do try and help each other out, whether it be with a job search or relocating cities. You know, we have all these resources for alumni. And I think that's really kind of an indicator of what kind of family we are uh, far beyond just being on campus. University of Southern California. Just to take that a little bit further, I think at USC, um, because we are a, a really wide and broad institution pulling students from all around the world, I think everyone um, would be, you'd be hard pressed not to find a community um, as soon as you get here, whether it's in your residential hall, whether it's in a part-time job that you have or campus organizations, um, I think there's a, a space and a place for everyone at USC. Voting college. Yeah, I would really emphasize our connection to the common good and emphasize that kindness is something that we really value highly, which I know all of our schools, I want to say, do. Um, but I would say that especially in our application and um, selection process, because we only bring in 515 students to each incoming first year class, we truly, truly, truly mean it when every single person brings something to that community and their whole selves and in the kindness that they've shown others that is evident in their application when they arrive. So um, our connection to the common good is what I I would hold on to. And Santa Clara University. Yeah, I would say definitely school spirit. 
We are really big on school spirit and having fun on campus. We're a very suburban style school, but we are also D1 across every sport that we do offer. So women's soccer, men's basketball is really large for our school. We just had a few players go into the NBA, get drafted. One of them just recently joined the Warriors. So it's lots of fun for our school and yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much to all of our wonderful presenters for your insight, your information into your institutions. And thank you all for joining us. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. And you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash mastery. Thank you again and have a great rest of the day.